everyone, my name is Nandini and I'm thrilled to welcome you to my channel. In this part one of statistics video, we are going to be exploring the fundamentals of statistics in the most beginner friendly way possible. But this isn't just any statistics video. I'll be sharing with you all how these basic statistical concepts can be applied in the real world and how they serve as a foundation for all the more advanced data science topics that you'll be learning in the future. As a data scientist who worked with top companies like Google and LinkedIn, I know firsthand how important it is to have a solid understanding of the fundamentals of statistics. And that is why I'm so excited to be able to share my knowledge with you all and get you all to be more confident while you're working with data. This will be the first video of a series of videos that I'll be posting on statistics where we will be eventually covering topics like samples and population, types of variables, causation, correlation, association, confounding variables, and many, many more. So get ready to expand your knowledge and take your first step towards becoming a data scientist. I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's get right into it. And don't forget to follow my Instagram page at data underscore pumpkin, where I'll be sharing more tips and tricks and a lot of different concepts about data science. So, all right, let's get into it. So let's start with the first set of concepts for the day, which is cases, variables, and constant. I'm going to start with giving you all a simple problem statement. Let's say that a teacher wants to know if uh, the third grade students that she's teaching, uh, if they spend more time reading at home, do they end up getting higher exam grades or not? It's a very simple problem statement, right? They just The teacher wants to just do some sort of analysis on her third grade students and try to understand if her students who spend more time reading at home, do they end up getting a higher grades or not? So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to split this problem statement into three of these major concepts that we want to talk about right now, which is cases, variables, and constant. What is a case? A case is an experimental unit from which data is collected. So in this example that I told you, the case is the third grade students. Why? Because they are the ones that we are trying to do an analysis on. So they are the cases. They are the experimental units. They are what we want to study. So the third grade students in my example are my cases. The second concept is variable. What is variable? Variable is a characteristic of a case or an experimental unit that can take on different values. Again, let's tie it back to our problem statement. If you think about it, what are we trying to analyze? We are trying to analyze if third grade students who spend more time reading at home, do they end up getting a higher grade or not? So in this case, the reading time spent at home is a variable. Why is the reading time spent at home a variable? Because it can keep changing from case to case. Not all students will end up spending five hours reading at home. Not all students will end up reading only for three hours at home. Some students will read for three hours. Some students will read for five hours. Some students only for 10 minutes, right? So essentially a variable is a characteristic of a case that can keep changing. So in this case, the amount of time that the student spends reading is a variable because it can change from case to case. There is also another variable in the same problem statement. And what is that? The second variable is the exam grade. Why is the second variable also a variable? Why is exam grade also a variable? Because exam grade can also change from student to student, can also change from case to case. Are all students gonna end up getting A plus? Are all students gonna end up failing? No, right? Different students will end up getting different scores or different marks. So the exam grade is also a variable. So in this problem statement, we have the case, which is the third grade students, because that is who we want to analyze. We also have identified two variables. One variable is the amount of time that the student spends reading at home because it keeps changing from student to student. The second variable that we have is uh, the exam grade that the student secures, because again, this is also a characteristic that can keep changing from student to student. And finally, we have the last concept that we want to cover at this point, which is constant. What is a constant? As the word itself defines, it is a characteristic, unlike a variable, it is a characteristic that is same for all the cases in the study. So in this case, what would be the constant? The constant would be the grade level of the student. 
Why is the grade level of the student cons a constant? Because we are only analyzing third grade student. The fact that all these students are a part of the third grade is a constant. There is no change student to student. So that is the introduction of the first three concepts to you, which is cases, variables, and constant. Let's move on to the next one. So the next topic now that we want to cover are variable types. There are essentially two kinds of variable types. There's categorical variable and there are quantitative variables. Let's start with the first one. What are categorical variables? Categorical variables are variables that can be grouped into categories or classes based on their properties or characteristics. These variables are also known as qualitative variables. What do I mean by this? Categorical variables are variables that can be grouped into categories. Let me give you an example. What is the color of the dress or the shirt that you're wearing? It's either blue, it's either green or yellow or black or red. The color can be grouped into certain categories. Another example, what, th what is the kind of vehicle you're driving? Is it an auto? Is it a, a car? Is it a bus? Is it a sedan? Is it a two-wheeler? Again, these are different kinds of categories, right? The type of vehicle. Or what gender do you go by? So all these are categorical vari variables. Why? Because they can be grouped into certain categories or classes. Let's take the example of our earlier case study, right, where the teacher wants to understand by analyzing her third grade students that a student who ends up spending more time at home reading, do they end up getting a higher grade or not? We already identified that there are two variables in that example, one being the amount of time that the student spends reading at home, and the second being uh, the exam grade that the student secured. Now, we know the first variable is a numerical variable, right? It's not a qualitative variable. The amount of time spent at home reading is not a qualitative variable. It's, it can take in only numerical values, like you either spend five hours reading or 5.5 hours reading or 10 hours reading or 50 minutes reading or 20 minutes reading. These are numerical variables. However, what about the second variable? That is the exam grade secured by the student. That grade can either be an A, a plus, B, B plus, B minus, C, C plus, C minus, D, D plus, D minus. Again, do you think these are categorical variables? The exam grade is an example of a categorical variable. Why? Because the grade can only be uh, one of these few categories, right? You can either be an A or A plus or B or B plus or C or C plus. So in our earlier example, exam grade, that variable is an example of a categorical variable. Let's move on to the second kind of variable, which is quantitative variable. We define that categorical variable is a qualitative variable. Then we have a quantitative variable. What is a quantitative variable? Quantitative variables are variables that can be measured on a numerical scale. What do I mean that they can be measured on a numerical scale? Let's think of different examples. Height can be measured on a numerical scale, like 160 centimeter or 140 or 180. Your weight, 48 kg, 58 kg, 60 kg, they can be measured on a numerical scale. Let's take our earlier example. Our earlier example being the amount of time spent reading at home. Isn't that also a numerical variable and can be measured on a numerical scale? So that is a quantitative variable. The amount of time spent reading at home is a quantitative variable. Now, within quantitative variable also, there are two kinds of variables. One is a discrete variable, and the second is a continuous variable. What is a discrete variable? Discrete variables are variables that can only take on very specific values. What do I mean by this? Let's say I go to the shop and I want to buy lace and they come in packets. So I can buy two packets of lace or five packets of lace, but can I buy 6.33 packets of lace or 6.33334 packets of lace or 6.000532 packets of lace? No, right? It doesn't take on decimal, you know, infinite values. It takes on very specific value like one packet or five packet or 10 packet or 50 packets. It takes very specific values. Another example is the number of children in the family. The number of children in the family can only be either you have one child or two children or three children or four children or five children. You cannot have 8.33 children. So those are discrete variables. Discrete variables are numerical variables or quantitative variables that can take on very specific values. The second kind of quantitative variable are continuous variables. Continuous variables are variables that can take on any value within a certain range. Again, let me give you an example. Let's take the quantitative variable height. 
will your height be exactly let's say you know your height and you're like oh it's roughly around 160 cm it's roughly around 160 cm but is it exactly and specifically 160 cm or could it also be 160.0003 cm or 160.1112 cm or 159.9993 cm it can take on any value in a certain range like the decimal points can be infinite you can never really say you are exactly this height often in our conversation we just end up you know rounding off the number and then saying 160 cm but your exact numerical height is very different correct so those are continuous variables so just to summarize everything that we've spoken about we talked about variable types which is categorical variable and quantitative variable categorical variables are variables that can be grouped into categories like gender like color of the dress that you're wearing the type of vehicle type of phone exam grades etc these are also known as qualitative variable the second kind of variable is a quantitative variable the quantitative variables are measured on a numerical scale or have a numerical value again within quantitative va variables you can have a discrete variable where the variable can only take on a specific value such as the number of children in a family or a number of lace packet that you bought from the store or it can be a continuous variables where the variable can take on any value within a certain range such as height weight etc so in the previous slide we talked about a form of distinction of variable types in this slide we are going to talk about another way to also define variable types apart from quantitative and categorical there's also another way in which we can uh, divide variable types which is basically explanatory variables and response variable now these variable types are super important even in the future uh, of your data science journey because these are variable types that you'll often hear about uh, again and again while you are going through statistical analysis while you're doing hypothesis testing significance testing especially in modeling uh, machine learning ai what, especially when you reach that area you know these variable types have a lot of importance and understanding that is required when you get there so let's start with the very basics of it there are two kinds of variable types as far as this aspect is concerned one is the explanatory variable and second is the response variable now understand that both the explanatory and response variable can be either categorical or quantitative it doesn't matter these are different forms of uh, variable types right this this is a different group of variable types what is an explanatory variable first of all let me tell you that this term explanatory variable can go by a lot of other different terms very commonly used across the industry like independent variables predictor variables or input variables these are the different common terminologies that the explanatory variables take so anytime you hear independent variable or predictor variable or input variable just know that they are talking about explanatory variable now like i mentioned earlier explanatory variable can be either categorical or quantitative but what are explanatory variable these are variables that are believed to have an effect on the outcome or a response variable in a given study or an experiment once again explanatory variables are those variables that are believed to have an effect on the outcome in a given study or experiment let's take our earlier used case an example which is a teacher wants to study her third grade students and assess if the amount of time that the student spends reading at home does it impact the student's exam grades or not we already identified that there are two variables here one is the student's exam grades which is the outcome right we want to assess the outcome that is the student's exam grade and how is the outcome affected by the input variable which is basically the amount of time spent reading at home now when i put the statement this way what do you think is the explanatory variable here the explanatory variable is the amount of time the student spends reading at home why because this is the variable that they are using to explain the outcome the outcome being the exam grade secured by the student what about response variable response variables are those variables that are affected by the explanatory variables or we think will be affected by the explanatory variable in a given study or experiment 
Again, response variables also go by a bunch of different terminologies like dependent variables, outcome variables, or output variables. So in our case, in the previous example that we spoke about, our response variable will be the grade secured by the students because this is the outcome that we are looking for, right? And we want to see how is this outcome affected by the input variable or the explanatory variable, which is essentially the amount of time spent reading at home. So I hope that's very clear to you. We have two variables in our earlier study, which is the amount of time spent reading at home, and how does this variable affect your outcome variable, which is your grade secured by the student. So in this situation or in this equation, the explanatory variable is the amount of time spent reading at home, and the response variable is grade secured by the student. I want to give you a second problem statement. What is the effect of a person's weight on the longevity of this person or the lifespan of this person. So again, here in this study, we have two variables. What are our two variables? One variable is the weight of the person, which is a numerical variable, which is a quantitative variable and also a continuous variable. The second variable that we have is the lifespan of the person, which is also age, like 80 or 70 or 60, which is also a quantitative variable. So in this study, both the variables that I have here are quantitative variables. Now we need to identify which variable is the explanatory variable and which one is a response variable. In this study, we want to identify or assess the impact of the person's weight on the outcome. What is our outcome? The age or the lifespan of the person. So in this example, the age of the lifespan of the person becomes the response variable or the output variable and the input variable or the explanatory variable or the predictor variable is the weight of the person. So I hope this gives you some additional context on how to identify the explanatory variable and a response variable in any study. So that's it for the first part video of the Series 1 Statistics channel and we've already in our first part covered some very fundamental concepts which is cases variable constant, what is the difference between categorical and quantitative variables, discrete and continuous variable, explanatory and response variable and in the next part of the same series we are going to be covering samples versus population, statistics versus parameter, sampling bias and confounding variables and finally in the third part of Series 1 Statistics video we we are going to be talking about causation versus association, independent versus paired sample, and control group versus treatment group. So you can see that we have a lot planned for you in the next coming weeks. I hope you all were able to enjoy this video and learn a lot at the same time as well. I'm really excited to see you all in the next video, so stay tuned.